This is lesson 4.2, combining functions algebraically. The focus on this lesson is learning how to write the equations of functions that are the sum, difference, product, or quotient of other functions. And then we'll learn how to determine the domain and range. So let's first start with adding functions right here. And just a little bit of a notation for you. Uh, when we're trying to find the uh, sum of f of x and g of x, we can just write it like so, f of x plus g of x, which can also be written in this format right here. So if you take a look at the right-hand side right here at these uh, given functions, uh, we have the function f of x, like so. We have the function g of x, a linear function. And then we have this new function, the combined functions, when we find the sum of h of x right here. That's this one, like so. And so the question is, how did that function come to be like that? Uh, where did that point, for instance, come from? Why is that point at 2, 1 for this new function? So that's what we're going to take a look at. So what we know is we know that this new function h of x is formed by adding f of x and g of x together. All right. So what we can do is we can focus on a given input value. And so the value that we're going to choose to use right here is at 2. So if we put in 2 for x, like so, into both of our functions, we have f of 2 and g of 2. And we're going to take a look at what happens. So f of 2. Well, that's the function f of x. We've put in 2 right here. And the output value that we get is 2. So we know that f of 2 is equal to 2 g of 2, let's try that. So this is our function g of x. If we put in 2 right here, the output value we get is negative 1. And so if you combine these together, 2 plus a negative 1 gives you 1. We now know that h of 2 is equal to 1. So that means when you put an input value in of 2 for our new function, we're getting an output of 1. And so that's where that ordered pair came from right there. It was a combination of adding this one and this one together. Okay. Uh, lastly, right now, let's take a look at the domain. So the domain right here of uh, our functions. So if we think of the ones that we had, we have f of x and we have g of x. And then, of course, we had our combined function h of x. Well, what happens for all these ones? Well, f of x, that function right there, what can we say about the domain? The domain has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. g of x, of course, is a linear function, so x can be anything. And here's what you're going to do for your new function. Now, it should be pretty obvious that um, right here, if you just look at this new function, h of x, that it is also uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. But the reasoning behind that is that these values right here need to be common. Okay. So what I mean when I say the word common is um, it must exist for both of them. So even though this graph right here for g of x existed for everything, because the other one didn't, that's why we can't include it for a new equation here, h of x. All right, so we've added functions. Let's go and take a look at how we might subtract them. And again, we have the same uh, notation up here uh, to subtract fractions, very similar. Uh, in this case, you'll notice that we have the same function f of x, g of x, but in this case, we have d of x right there. So you'll say that d of x is going to be the result of taking f of x and subtracting g of x. We're going to look at what happens at input values at 2 once again. So we have f of 2 and g of 2. And just to show you once again how we find those points, uh, for f of x right here, when we put in 2, we get 2 out. And when we put in 2 for g, we get out negative 1. So we have minus negative 1. Of course, two negatives right there is going to make us a positive, so we have 3. So we know that d of 2 is going to equal 3. So that's how you get that point. And if you truly wanted to, right, you could take any one of these input values, like this one at 4, and if you combined this ordered pair and this ordered pair together, you would get the resultant for our new function, uh, d of x. And again, let's take a look at our domain. Well, the domain, what do you have going on here? Well, the domain is the same thing that we had before. This function, g of x, is available for anything. Uh, g of x, uh, sorry, g of x is available for anything. f of x has to be greater than or equal to uh, negative 2. So we know that the domain for our new function, d of x, is going to be, so I'll just write d of x. The domain for that is going to be x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Again, because we're looking at uh, what is common, all right? Let's go on to dealing with multiplying functions. Okay, uh, Very, very similar again. Uh, this time we have our function uh, g of x again. We have f of x. And we have our new function that looks like so. So where did that function come from? Well, we know that this new function, in this case we've called it p of x. p of x is equal to f of x times g of x. Okay, So what happens if we put in a value of 2? Well, it's going to be no different than what it's been before. So f of 2 uh, was equal to 2. And g of 2 is equal to negative 1, of course. You multiply those together, and you get negative 2. So we know that p of 2 is equal to negative 2. And lo and behold, you can see that that is where that ordered pair is, like so. Okay. Um, what about the domain for the function of 
uh, p of x? Well, what do you see again? We're looking for what's common, so even though you're multiplying, you're still going to have the same thing. We would just say once again here that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay? So um, all we're really looking at right there is if you ever want to find the ordered pair, um, whether you're doing uh, addition, subtraction, or multiplication so far, um, for our, our new function, you just pick a point and you'll put it in for the function of f and put it in for the function of g, and then you'll be able to find what the new function looks like. Okay, so let's try an example right here. We have example number one. Um, it says given the functions uh, f of x is equal to x plus 2 and g of x is equal to the absolute value of x, state the domain and range of each function. So let's talk about f of x first. All right, so f of x, we'll, uh, we'll break this down into the domain and range for it, and then we'll do uh, g of x over here. Okay, so f of x, we just have a linear function right here, and so we know that whenever you have a linear function, the domain and range is going to be anything. All right, anything goes, it goes infinitely left, right, and up and down. And then this, of course, is an absolute value function uh, for g of x. And if you recall, absolute value functions make, uh, when it's linear like this, it's going to make a v-shape. And so the graph is going to go infinitely in the x direction. But remember, we can't have any negative values, so we're going to say that y must be greater than or equal to 0. All right, now we have b. Given h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, write an explicit equation for h of x, then determine its domain and range. So all we really need to do here is we just need to substitute in the values for our function f of x and g of x. So h of x is going to be the combination of those two. And so we know the function f of x was equal to x plus 2 from above. And g of x is equal to um, the absolute value of x. So that simply is just all you need to do for your explicit equation. It's just a combination of adding them together. Now the domain and range for these is kind of interesting. The domain is super easy to figure out. What you're going to look for for the domain is you're going to go back up to a right here and you're just going to look for what was common. And so because x is a member of the rails for both of them, we can say that that's going to be the case in, uh, in terms of the domain for the new one. Now the range requires you to graph to go and take a look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to uh, desmos.com and we'll put in our new explicit equation right here and take a look at the range. All right, so we've put in our function x plus 2 plus the absolute value of x. And what you can see right here is we have a function that looks like the following. So if we manipulate the graph, you'll see that this graph is going infinitely um, high right here. So if we kept on dragging it. But then what happens right here is we get down to um, a, a value of 2 in terms of the, uh, the y-axis. And then it goes uh, infinitely in that direction. And the reason is, is if you imagine what happens if you put in a value of negative 2 in for x, well, the absolute value of that is going to be positive 2. So so those values, once we get uh, past the uh, input values of x that are negative, those are, are going to always cancel them out, and so that's why we're left with 2 right there. So what can we say about our, uh, our range right here? Well, we would say that y must be greater than or equal to 2. Okay. And so if you're wondering how we found that value, you just might want to make a little note for yourself in order to use um, technology of some sort. Okay. Uh, for the domain, again, we're just looking for what the combination of the two is. All right. All right, so C says, given P of X is equal to F of X times G of X, write another explicit equation for P of X, and then again, determine its domain and range. So the explicit equation is uh, super easy. We just need to basically take our two functions and just demonstrate that we are multiplying them uh, like so. So we have our linear function, our absolute value function. And if we think about the domain and range again, um, because the uh, domains for both of them where x is a member of the reals, and we know that the combination of those two functions is going to look like so. Uh, to find the range, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go and use um, some technology in order to do that. So if we go over to desmos.com and enter in our function like so, you'll see that we get something like this. And so again, we saw that our domain is x is a member of the reals. That makes sense once you look at the graph. And the range you'll see is also the same thing. So we can say that for our range here that y is a member of the reals as well. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next page. So the one that we've left out so far, of course, is uh, dividing uh, functions. So it's, uh, it's just slightly different, and so we're going to take a look at that now. All right, so dividing functions. Uh, just like before, uh, we have some notation, two different ways that we can express the division of functions. Um, like before as well, we have our function g of x, our linear. We have our function f of x. And then we can, when we combine both those functions, we get this new one that looks like so. You'll see these dotted lines um, are going to form uh, in this case because we're going to have some, um, some restrictions on our domain. Okay. So we can take our new function, q of x, notice that that's what it's uh, labeled as right here, and q of x is going to be equal to f of x divided by 
y, uh, g of x. And what we're trying to look at here is how do they get these ordered pairs. And again, we're focusing on this value of 2. It's kind of been a common theme. So um, theoretically, q of 2 is going to be equal to what uh, f of 2 divided by g of 2 is. So if we put in f of 2, and then we divide it by g of 2, what's going to happen? Well, we know that f of 2 is equal to 2. And we know that g of 2 was equal to negative 1. And so if you take 2 and you divide it by negative 1, you have negative 2. So we know that q of 2 is equal to negative 2 like so. And so that's how you get this new order pair right here. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the domain for this one. Okay. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down for all of the different functions that we're given. So we have f of x, we have g of x, and then we have our new function q of x. And just to remind you kind of uh, how this all worked, uh, for f of x right here, the function had a domain such that it was x is greater than or equal to negative 2. g was the linear one, so it was uh, x is a member of the reals. Okay, and then we had our new function, uh, q of x. All right, and what you can say for q of x is that again it's going to be common. X is going to be greater than or equal to negative two. So if you take a look at our function uh, q of x right here, you'll see that we have values at negative two, and they go in the positive direction, right? And then it picks back up down here. But the one thing you have to notice in this case is that we have um, values that don't work right there. So we need to say that x is greater than or equal to negative two, with the exception that x cannot equal. Example 2 says, given the function f of x is equal to the square root of x, and g of x is equal to x minus 2, uh, state the domain and range. So again, we'll take the function f of x, we'll take the function g of x over here, we have our domain and our range, domain and our range. Um, let's first start with g of x this time, we just have a linear function, so that's super easy. x is a member of the reals, and y is a member of the reals as well. Uh, for our function f of x, we have a square root function. And so if you remember, we cannot have negative values for either. So we'll say that x must be greater than or equal to 0, and y must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, uh, That's it. Next, what we need to do for b is it, uh, just like the other example that we did right here, I want you to write an explicit uh, equation. So um, we have our function q of x is equal to f of x over g of x. We just substitute in our functions. That's all you have to do. Okay. And then what we'll work on now is uh, determining what our domain and our range are. Okay. So to determine the domain, what we need to do is we need to take a look at our uh, original function right here and look at what is common with our x values. And so what we can see here is that x is greater than or equal to 0 is common in both. So that's going to be what we're going to put for our domain. But there's one other thing that we have to worry about. And we saw that in the, uh, in the previous kind of uh, example when we were learning uh, first how to divide by functions. We sometimes have those asymptotes. And we get those when we are dividing by 0. And so right here you'll notice that uh, if we put in a value of 2 right here, we'd have 2 minus 2 would be 0, which we can't have. So we're going to say here that our domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, with the exception that x cannot equal 2. Okay? And to uh, determine the range for this, we're once again going to go over and uh, take a look at desmos.com. All right, so once we put our function in the square root of x divided by x minus 2 right here, you'll see that our function goes infinitely high and infinitely low right here. Um, because we're only worried about the range at this state, uh, we would say that uh, y is a member of the reals. With the one exception right here, um, we have a horizontal asymptote at, uh, at y equals 0. So that's the one restriction that we're going to have on our range. So we'll say that y is a member of the reals, with the one exception that um, it's impossible for this value here uh, to ever be equal to 0, so y cannot equal 0. Okay, uh, let's go on to our last example. Example 3 I think you're going to find really straightforward. It says consider the function h of x is equal to 4 plus uh, 5x plus 2x cubed. Uh, write explicit equations in four functions, f of x, g of x, n of x, and m of x, so that h of x is equal to the sum of all of them. All right. And so what they're just saying is, um, what could you have made these original functions like so, such that would have added up to this? And so the first thing I need you to know is that this answer right here is not the only answer. So I want you to write that there is many solutions. In fact, there is an infinite amount of solutions. So um, it depends how creative you want to be right here. I'm not going to be that creative at all. Uh, what could you do to make 4? Well, you could go and make uh, f of x equal to 3. So you could have 3 plus 1. 
and then how are you going to get uh, 2x cubed to happen? And the 5x, well, you might add just 5x and add uh, 2x cubed. So if these were the original functions, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you could imagine if we were to graph them like we've done before and then look at a common point, um, we would have been able to find the new equation like so. And so if we add these together, you'll see we have this function. Okay, so that's just one possibility. Uh, the next one wants you to uh, do almost the same thing right here, uh, but do it with subtraction. So again, uh, just so you don't forget, I'll, maybe I'll just write this, but h of x is equal to 4 plus 5x plus 2x cubed. And so what we're going to try to do here is figure out what uh, f of x and g of x could be. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to make this function be almost the same thing. So I'm going to make f of x be 4 plus 5x plus, I don't know, 8x cubed. Okay, and what would you have to do to get this function to occur? You just have to subtract 6x cubes off, like so. All right, and then you would have the resulting function that we're looking for. All right, and again, you need to understand that there is many solutions for, uh, for this one as well. Example 4 says, given p of x is equal to x squared minus 9, uh, write the uh, explicit equation for two functions, f of x and g of x, so that um, it is created by um, the multiplication of those two. And so, um, again, there is uh, many possibilities uh, for these ones. But in this case, what you might notice is that that is what we call a difference of squares. We worked on that in, uh, in grade 11. So x squared minus 9, if we were to factor that, you might remember it's x plus 3 and uh, x minus 3. All right? And so if you multiply both those together, that would be one possible uh, opportunity. Okay? Let's go and deal with a, uh, a different one right here. So this one says um, q of x is equal to x plus 1. And so what could you have done with f of x and g of x in order to get that to be um, the solution? Well, I'm actually going to use the same difference of squares kind of up here in a, in a similar way. If you think, if we were to take x squared minus 1 and divide it by x minus 1, um, the outcome would be x plus 1 like so. And the reason I know this to be the case is, um, this is kind of over and above right here, but if you were to factor that out, you would have x plus 1, x minus 1. And if I divide it by x minus 1, what do we know about these two terms? Well, we know that these two terms are going to uh, cancel like so. And so um, that's how you get x plus 1. Okay, um, so that concludes this lesson. This lesson kind of sets the stage for the, the rest of the unit. Um, the, the big thing that you need to know is how to, uh, how to graph and, uh, and also how to determine the domain and range. Uh, the domain, you're looking for what's common between the functions and the range, you will likely need to graph it. All right, that concludes this lesson.